welcome back to part two of the Monza build. Right, in this episode we're going to start looking at what we're going to do as with the porting of the barrel and casings and stuff. We don't want to go too much, it's just a road tune, but we do want to tidy things up and just improve on a few things if we possibly can. Yes, I've had some advice from a guy called uh, Taylor Sturges in the UK that's worked on this barrel before and uh, done a lot of tuning work with it. Um, so he's given me some advice on certain things that's come in really, really handy. So a big shout out to him and a big thanks to him uh, about the bridge in the middle of the, uh, of the inlet. Because as we'll see now, that this bridge obstructs the reed valve going into the barrel and charges all the charge down one side of the port and into the uh, Boyson uh, port which is um, not distributing the fuel and gases so well so it's given us a little bit of advice on that to actually trim down that bridge to allow gases to flow a little bit better on both sides of the port the reed block sits about like this so you can see as it, all the flow is sort of going up to one side this reed stop here is obstructing the other side of the port so most of it goes down this side of the port and down the uh, the Boyson port on that side the Boyson auxiliary port that goes down the side here um, so what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this bridge here down to try and even out some of the flow uh, into the other side of the barrel the other thing we need to be very careful of when we when we're porting this barrel is the position of the auxiliary exhaust ports and the gudgeon pin because we can get cross contamination as the gudgeon pin passes the auxiliary or exhaust port and then the transfer port you can then get cross contamination and having a, having your primary gases go straight down your exhaust port and you're losing power because you're losing gases down the exhaust port so i've put two little blue dots on my piston here and here to indicate where my gudgeon pin the bottom of the gudgeon pin is so if we slide that just inside the bore to the position it's going to be in it's like that so we can see if we zoom in hopefully we can that this auxiliary port here is almost touching the bottom of the uh, gudgeon pin so we can't do anything on that side and on the other side there's a little bit of give maybe about two mil so really we can't advance the uh, auxiliary ports up any higher around the board to get any more area so they're going to have to stay as they are so what I'm what I am going to do is I'm going to increase the exhaust port area in the blowdown period so during the blowdown stage it's going to have a bigger primary exhaust port so we're going to open that up on both sides not a little chef's hat but more of a trapezoid uh, shape and there uh, and that's going to give us uh, a bit more area during the blowdown period and maybe a little bit more power so so we're not going to advance the port timings anymore we're going to leave them exactly as they are and the transfer port timings as uh, Tino set them up um, but we are going to widen the area on the exhaust port in the blowdown. The auxiliary exhaust port exits here into this part of the barrel. But because it's so narrow across here, it is restricting the flow of the exhaust gases getting away. So we're going to open them up in more of a like of a petal shape in here to increase, sort of accelerate flow out of that port and try and draw more gases down it. Right, we're, uh, we're moving round to our exhaust port, main exhaust port and two auxiliary ports. 
Now, for those that don't know, when you pour, when your, your piston comes down, as soon as your exhaust port opens, that's when you get the sonic crack of the exhaust. That's when you get the crack, the sound wave begins then at that point. It's like a, it's like a bit of a musical instrument. It works on sound. So when that sound wave starts going down, we want all of the gases to be expelled before the transfer ports open during the blow down period. So this is the most important part of the exhaust area is the blow down period. So we will need to get as much area as possible during the blow down to get ourselves exhaust gases out as fast as possible. Right, we're going for 70% of bore on cordial width of uh, our main port. So that works out on a 70 mil bore to 50 millimeters. So that will be our cordial width, 50 millimeters. Okay, we've marked our port up with a bit of blue. I've also marked up on the outside of the bore here, our 50 millimeters. So I like to use a thin as possible, not a straight edge, but a uh, blade here from a cutting knife because you can get more accuracy with it because your scriber can run much closer. So we just put a little line here that gives us our maximum on our uh, exhaust width. That's just marked into the blue, not into the metal. We don't want to go into the chrome. So that's quite a wide exhaust port. So now we're going to work up to that those points uh, with our uh, porting tool and get us ourselves a nice exhaust port area increase. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> port more or less how we want it. The port timings we can't really be sure yet because until we put the crank in because it's got a longer stroke and a 110 mil rod we'll have to uh, put the crank in and the piston on a dry build and then work all our timings out. Luckily with the 110 mil rod we got packing plates top and bottom so that means we can adjust port timings as we kind of need it you see a little bit we could put a smaller one on the bottom, drop the port timings down if it's too peaky and unrideable, or we can raise it up and get a bit more peak power if we want. So it's sort of variable. But we've got my exhaust port shape exactly as an area as good as I can get it without going too crazy. So uh, I'm quite happy with that so far, but now we need to start working on the bottom end of the barrel with the transfers 
and matching it up to the casing somewhere near not perfect but hell what the hell close enough let's have a go okay there's absolutely bags of material to come out of this uh, casing at the moment so it's as you can see if I just offer the barrel up and you have a look you can see that there's loads needs to come out over here because it's nowhere near the skirt and nowhere near the the ports on the barrel so oodles have got to come out so what we're going to do is we're going to blue this up in the top here both sides and then we'll offer the barrel up we'll put the studs back in now we only need top two on this barrel because the bottom two have got some fancy little tricky uh, bolts to go in there I'll explain to that that to you later so we only run two barrel studs so let's slide our barrel on and the bottom is actually bolted on underneath here well you can't see my finger pan down so the bottom of the barrel is actually bolted on underneath here with two bolts there's a gap here that allows us to have no studs on the bottom running through the barrel and that's why we can have crazy exhaust port area that's why I like this barrel <laughs> So we'll get in with our little hooky scriber and mark up the casing. So we've got at least something to work to. So we know that the skirt comes up to there, but what we're probably going to do on this is I'm gonna literally take away more skirt, I think, at a later date when I start working on these. Uh, but I need to find out just how much material I've got here. So we're gonna make up a gasket first and see what we've got to play with. Because we don't wanna go too far and have a not, not have enough gasket face. So it's all about a little bit here and a little bit there and not just rush into it like a madman. Okay, so we've got sort of a rough gasket here and we're going to use this just to mark things up more or less. But what I want to do is to take advantage of casings and cheat on our transfer ports. We want to take away more skirt here on this part and then we're going to port into the casing like this and then round like that so using our casing as part of a part of our uh, transfer port and flowing in like this so that will happen on both sides which means we'll have to remark inside again I've had a look now and what I'm going to do is just trim this gasket then we'll offer it up to the casing and make sure that we've we're not got uh, we're not going to have a problem with the uh, gasket face so I don't think we will because there's plenty there we can't go very much on this side because of the uh, the stud because that stud still exists but we can go fairly close So it's going to kind of go like that. We'll be taking a bit out of there as much as I can. And that will be flowing into our port. Right, so as you can see, we've not been excessive. We don't need massive, massive transfer ports. 
but it does increase a better flow than this than this step here that we've got on the top it's far better to take material away this top part is the most important part of getting material away the bottom you can't really do anything with it because it's too close to the stud uh, so by getting this away we're going to increase some area and flow into the transfer ports uh, and that should help us with a bit more power so it gives us more to pull from that exhaust likes to suck straight through the expand uh, through the through the transfers whatever gases you've got here in the casing around the transfers when when that exhaust is sucking it's pulling it straight through it's pulling it straight through and into the combustion chamber so but the, the also thing when the pulses come back you've got to be you don't want to be to have uh, exhaust gases being pushed back into here and burning and you you'll know that that's happening because you get all brown burn marks inside your transfer ports right i don't know whether you can see what we've done here we've just cut down here on the skirt both sides so now we've got to take this piece out because we're uh, obviously removing some skirt to make more room for transfer port so i'm just going to cut this bit off very very carefully Bye bye. Now the other side. And then the rest of it we'll take down with the porting tool. Right, ladies and gentlemen, another little look at our progress. So we've cut the skirt away here, and that's enabled us to add extra to the port here on our casing as well. It also aids flow in from the uh, from the Boyson port. I could take material away and blend this into the Boyson port, and that's going to aid filling of the casing from the Boyson port as well. So it's all win-win as far as I can see so uh, yeah this is looking good so uh, a little bit more work yet here we don't need massive ports like I said it's all about making the gases flow at velocity and they and, 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 and moving quickly and that's how it moves through the engine it doesn't go through big areas faster because it's doesn't work like that Right, we'll have a little look now at progress. This is where we've got to take out on that side. We've sort of completed our rough out on this side. And that's what it looks like now. You can see the difference in the area of both ports. We haven't taken everything out massive, gone to a really tiny gasket face. That's just insane, there's no need for it. Right, we'll have a little run through just what I've used. I haven't got any fancy stuff, like you can buy a thousand pounds worth of porting equipment with angle head grinders and die grinder and everything. But basically, I've just got a really old vintage angle head air powered grinder, die grinder, I use a couple of these uh, battery powered Dremels because they're easy to handle then it's just various uh, carbide bursts, small ones big ones if I'm using my drill for really roughing out stuff if you're moving big amounts of stuff you need something like that but then finishing off I'm um, just using uh, normal carbide burrs you can get these quite cheap now Whereas before they were really expensive. Um, yeah, polishing up various little flat wheels and stuff. Don't do too much polishing, that's just to smooth it out a bit. 
So yeah, I don't do that much porting, but I've had a go today. It's been a while since I did any. So uh, let's have a look what we've done. So you can see we've reshaped the casing to match up to the barrel. We haven't gone right out, we haven't gone mad. Just matching it up and giving that extra little bit where we said. And here on the barrel, we change the shape of the exit part of the uh, auxiliary exhaust ports there. So they're more of a pear shape opening up as they come out. So hopefully that helps a bit. We did some work on the transfer ports. Want to look inside? No polishing done really. It's all just ground out and smoothed down a little bit. I haven't gone all the way down the transfer ports and polishing. It's basically a waste of time. It doesn't do anything. So we cut the skirt away and uh, widened the, the uh, entrance to the transfer port there and matched it to the casing. We've done absolutely nothing in the inlet port, just smoothed it out a little bit. Oh, tell a lie. We have done this modification that I mentioned earlier. Uh, Taylor Sturges, who um, gave us some advice on this tune, told us to drop the height of that. So that's been dropped. It's not knife edged. I don't like knife edging. That's sort of just rounded off a bit and dropped down by about 4 mil. Uh, drop these transfers down a little bit as well and straighten them out because they're a bit crooked. Um, that's it really. Pretty simple tune. Hopefully I'd like to get about 30 out of it if we can. 30 break and I'll be happy. Okay so you've uh, seen us have a play around with the ports and do a little bit of porting. Uh, big shout out to Taylor there, Taylor Sturges for all his help and giving advice on this uh, job. I know he's done a lot of work on these in, on these barrels before. So uh, he's done work with Tino Sachi, so I believe. So uh, that's a big thanks to you, and uh, see if it all works out well. See you all later.